Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing like more vlog style stuff. I'm just getting ready to go ahead and uh, leave for this money open tournament in Atlanta. It's about a two and a half hour drive for me, but I got some stuff I got to get done over here. So I still have to pack my clothes. I got to string two rackets and I got to get all my camera gear and uh, laptop together to make sure I'm ready to edit and upload any videos that I might record there. Uh, don't expect any match play from there because I still feel a little bit strange uh, recording people. Plus I don't have the thing that hooks into the fence so I can put my GoPro on. So I'm not going to set my tripod in the court. I don't even think that's allowed so I'm, I'm not gonna even mess around with that if I do record anything it'll just be me in Atlanta doing some stuff having fun but yeah I'll make sure to give you guys updates as to how it's going in the tournament uh, but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and take you along with me and get all my stuff together first we gotta start with stringing one of these rackets actually we gotta string two of them for today before I get stringing I just want to shout out Selenko strings they've been a partner with me since last year I've been using their confidential 120 for a long time I just switched to the confidential 125 uh, if you don't know or if you haven't followed this channel for a long time I had uh, severe arm problems with uh, uh, triceps tendonitis and I've been playing with like very very soft strings for a long time trying to figure out what would help my arm and honestly uh, the soft strings were great for a little bit the problem is the tension maintenance was so bad and I didn't understand at the time but the reason my arm started to hurt so much even with the softer strings uh, was that the uh, the string would go dead and then that would transmit a lot of vibrations to my arm and really hurt me so even though Confidential is not really a soft string, it's quite a stiff string. It's a very muted string and the tension maintenance is awesome. Uh, so I know exactly when this string goes dead, I know when I need to change it out, and I've had no arm problems since I've switched to the string. It's very counterintuitive for me because I've been playing with such soft polys, uh, but give it a try. If you have some arm problems, uh, go with a lighter gauge Confidential. Uh, play with it, don't let it die on you, just play with it until it's uh, done and uh, your arms would thank you quite a bit. It definitely helped me quite a bit. I love the muted feel of it, love the tension maintenance, um, but yeah, can't say enough about those guys. They're excellent. So like I was saying, I did make this transition from Confidential 120 to Confidential 1.25, uh, and I thought I was gonna have to restring this racket. I thought I had to do two of them, but when I checked it, actually the strings still have snapback. And I've played with this thing now for uh, two days worth of play. Usually around two days worth of play for any string for me is uh, done. The, the string is dead, there's no more snapback, there's nothing, there's no bite. Uh, I just checked and just kind of did like a little finger test. You can, what you can do is you can slide a main across and kind of let go of it and if it snaps back to place it usually means it's okay to keep playing probably isn't dead yet um, I'm just very shocked that it's, <laughs> it's not dead uh, I guess I've been playing with 120 for a really long time and just used to uh, strings just dying on me super quick but uh, yeah that is really cool uh, I'm super excited about that and I get to save a little extra string saves me money and uh, yeah saves the environment because this is not a very eco-friendly sport here so I'm really really happy about that um, but I'm gonna go ahead and stencil all these frames just thought I'd like send that out there because usually at this time after two hitting sessions the strings are toast uh, for me but very interesting I, I haven't played with 125 in a long time this is my really I've, I've just started switching to it it's my my first reel of 125 in years uh, since my college days and that is really cool uh, I have to remember that now I might not have to string as often as normal and I can save myself a little money well we're scrapping that whole idea of not having to string another racket I just made a mistake on my string job that I haven't done in years I uh, forgot to weave one time on the second to last string literally only one time Wow I have not done that in a very long time uh, that's unfortunate so I'm gonna it probably wouldn't change the way it played but I'm not leaving that to chance I'm gonna have to cut this out I just did this fresh good lord okay I guess I'll just have to redo it but I guess that's what happens when you're not focused and you're just not thinking about what you're doing back to the stringing machine all right so I finally redid the stringing on the racket uh, that's unfortunate I haven't made a string error like that in a, a quite a long time probably since I was about 15 years old so almost 10 years at this point but that's okay it happens to the best of us it is what it is uh, but I've gotten a lot of questions recently about what my current setup is on my actual playing racket and I think it's been happening a lot because I've been making quite a few reviews recently and people want to know what my opinion is based off of what preferences I currently have uh, so if you don't know already I play with the Bablet Pure Strike VS Tor this is the heavy version it comes in at 320 grams on strong and 98 square inch head and it's also a 16 by 20 pattern so quite a unique pattern quite a unique feel it's a very classic racket if you've never seen the VS uh, line of strikes from this generation they're all box beam they don't have the special throat like the strikes normally do they have a box beam traditional frame it's actually uh, very reminiscent of the old pure control line or the old uh, storm line if you guys remember those now I don't really do too many modifications but I will go over some of the key things that I think 
make my racket my racket. First of all, I play with uh, Selenko Confidential at 48 pounds. It's the 1.25 gauge. Uh, I fluctuate between, or I did fluctuate when I was playing with 120 at 50 being my preferred and 46 being the lowest I could possibly go to save my arm. Uh, but now that I'm playing with a little bit thicker gauge, I found that 48 pounds works really well for me and I get a ton of control from the little bit thicker gauge. Uh, anything else I do a little differently, so uh, I got a dampener that's not really too different. That's a Selenko Hypersorb dampener, really nice stuff. Uh, but the one thing I do do that's a little bit unique is uh, one thing you have to understand my grip is a size four and a half or a size four for my Europeans. It's a four and a half, it's a big grip. Uh, I don't wanna get into a debate of the small grip versus big grip thing. I play with a big grip, I prefer the feel of the big grip, it is what it is. I also play with two overgrips. So underneath this torn grip here is a Babolat overgrip. It's against the VS Original uh, overgrip. Uh, but in the past I've put a Wilson Pro overgrip underneath it. I put all sorts of different things. Basically what I do is I take some sort of cushioned overgrip and then I top it with a thinner grip. Now I've also gone back in the past and played with uh, two uh, Pro overgrips or two Yonex Super Graphs or two uh, very cushioned grips. That's fine for me as well. Uh, I am playing with the Turner grip right now because I've had some blister issues uh, with my grips not absorbing a lot of the sweat and this has uh, almost completely solved that issue. Uh, but yeah, so it's a four and a half uh, with a cushioned overgrip, some type, uh, some sort of Wilson Pro overgrip style grip and uh, then a torn grip on top. So that's probably the weirdest thing I do. And with all of this stuff put together, my racket comes in at almost exactly 350 grams when strung up. So super head light, super whippy, good stability because of the heavy uh, static weight of this racket. So yeah, now you guys know exactly what I play with and I have been bringing this setup in since like sophomore year of college. So at this point it's almost been uh, five, six years, maybe a little bit less, probably like five, four or five years uh, of playing with this, this exact setup. So I'm super comfortable with it. I'm very dialed with it. Also part of the reason that it's been a little bit of a nightmare to switch to a different racket, but I'm gonna go ahead and pack all my stuff now, get all my clothes together, get all my gear together, and uh, I'll go a little bit one by one and show you exactly what I do bring to tournaments. So instead of going through like all of the things that are just very generic, the things I bring like with, in terms of like tennis shoes, rackets, strings, grips, all of that. I'm gonna show you some of the weirder things and some of the more unique things I think that I bring that are uh, I'm finding very, very useful recently. Uh, so let's start off with some of the <laughs> more uh, medical stuff. Uh, Claritin and uh, some sort of nasal spray. I use Flonase because uh, this stuff you can use a little bit more regularly than Afrin and stuff like that. I developed severe allergies uh, within the last three years, especially around this time of year. That's why I've been sounding a little bit sick in the recent videos. Uh, so those come with me all the time. That's non-negotiable. I have to use that stuff. It's very important. Otherwise, I feel like I have a cold and it becomes really hard to breathe and all that stuff associated with having allergies. I get it really bad. Not fun. The next thing I want to mention is this O'Keefe's Working Hands. Uh, this is kind of like a hand cream here. My hands get really cracked and dry during this time of year during like the winter colder drier months uh, So I've never used this before until this year and my hands have been much better ever since using it uh, I had an old boss that told me about this stuff and uh, I highly recommend it if you have problems with your hands cracking during the winter Or if you're a coach and working all the time with your hands or really just anybody that works with their hands uh, Try this stuff out. It actually helps me quite a bit along with more medical stuff uh, Tagamet uh, some sort of like antacid uh, but this stuff is really excellent. Uh, it doesn't work the same as like Tums or anything like that, but it is excellent for uh, stopping uh, my acid reflux. I have a horrible problem with that, uh, but yeah, it's not, not such a big deal. I just treat it with that and I feel pretty good the next day. All right, this is still kind of on theme with medical, uh, but I bring along with me uh, this little bag here and inside this bag, there is a Theragun or a percussion gun type device. It's not really Theragun branded. Uh, but it is a percussion gun. Uh, this thing is excellent for massaging, uh, especially after long matches. Uh, and, and definitely when you get, uh, when you play matches, you'll notice you get a little bit nervous. It's kind of a universal thing. Even the best players get nervous. You get tight and you swing a little bit stiffer. Uh, so you will feel pain when you go into those pressure situations. I bring this. This is one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Uh, and when we got them versus our college team, uh, it was the number one requested uh, physical therapy device that we used. It was by far for me the thing that worked the best on any sort of minor uh, aches and pains love this thing this is the way to go if you have the money get like the good one but if you don't get the cheap one off of amazon like this i also bring with me a towel uh this is a full-size beach towel actually but it folds super small it's from a company called nomadics uh i bring it because it doesn't really have any logos or it doesn't have any big logos so it's pretty uh, itf legal um, but really the big reason is it's a full-size beach towel 
But I mean, look how small this thing becomes when you fold it down. It's, it's a recycled material. It's a little bit thinner, but it absorbs a ton of moisture. And for me, when I'm traveling and I don't have a lot of space, something like this that folds down really small uh, is invaluable. I cannot take a full size towel. Otherwise, this thing is a lifesaver. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but I've had this for over a year now and I've washed it a bunch of times, thrown it around, been rough with it because it's a tennis towel and it's been awesome. It's worked perfect. Uh, Nomadics, they don't sponsor me or anything like that, but cool brand, really like what these guys are doing. A lot of good work here. All right, so of course, yeah, I bring my tennis shoes. I play with the Nike Vapor Pros. Um, I never get them full price. <laughs> these are uh, normally, I think around $120. I got these on sale for 70 bucks, got three pairs, so I'm stocked up for a little bit of time. But this isn't the very interesting thing. What's interesting is what goes inside of them. So what goes inside my Vapor Pros are these footprints insoles. These are footprint game changers. Uh, they're a pretty stiff insole. They got a little pad on the uh, on the ball of the foot here, and they got some arch support here. Uh, these game changers are a custom orthotic insole that you can put inside of an oven about at like 250 degrees or 225 degrees, whatever it says in the box, for a couple minutes. Uh, the inside of this inflates. You put it inside your shoe and you step on it, you wear it around for a little bit, and the arch molds here. So it's a lot cheaper uh, than a standard custom orthotic. I'm not sponsored by these guys. The only people that I'm sponsored by is Selenko. So all I can do is recommend this. <laughs> these are awesome. Uh, plus they got some cool like uh, artist designs on them. Nobody will ever see them but you, uh, but they are kind of cool to look at. I started getting plantar fasciitis when I was around 15, 16 years old, and I dealt with it for a couple years, and I couldn't find a solution until I found these. These are actually not even really a tennis insole. Uh, these are a action sports insole used mostly in uh, skateboarding, snowboarding, stuff like that, and is used in Cirque du Soleil. I think they said like NASA uses this foam technology here for some of their more precise instruments to uh, reduce some of the vibrations that they're encountered with them. Uh, all I can say is it takes a lot of energy out of, of hard strikes. So my heel has uh, actually completely healed, uh, but I still continue to use these for impact protection, especially since I'm using a very uh, lightweight shoe with not a lot of foam like the uh, Vapor Pros do. And uh, for me, this has been an awesome, and no pun intended, this has been a game changer. Uh, uh, my feet thank me a lot, especially with the arch support. I highly recommend these for coaches standing for long hours. Um, my feet don't feel tired at the end of the day. Everything feels much better after wearing these. Uh, and I can't guarantee that they're gonna fix your plantar fasciitis, but what I can guarantee is that they will be uh, very nice and very kind to your feet. Look at some of the videos, it's kind of cool how much energy they take out of it. I know a lot of people are trying to get like carbon plates and whatever to get better energy return. I haven't noticed that I'm any slower with these, I just know that I have a lot more impact protection because of wearing these, so. If you got the money, do it, do it. They last in multiple pairs of shoes. You can remold them uh, a couple times and they are awesome. Highly recommend these. Uh, last but not least here, uh, I also bring around a, a pair of just casual shoes and a casual outfit. Uh, not running shoes, nothing like that. Literal going out stuff. And I do that because I think it's important sometimes when you're at tournaments to just get away from it all and uh, really relax and explore the area uh, that you're in. And I think when you're in tennis clothes at all times, I think it kind of sets a precedent that you're just a player and you just do one thing. And I don't think that's really healthy. I think it's better, at least for my game, to sort of take a step back from it from time to time, uh, go out, relax and enjoy stuff. And to get out of those tennis clothes now, that mentality of it's tennis, 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 tennis. Uh, so when I go out, I wear non-tennis clothes and uh, try to be just a normal person for a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's what, but all the weird stuff that I bring with me. So uh, let me know down in the comments if you bring anything weird with you as well. All right, so next day I didn't really get the time to finish the video like I liked to yesterday, um, but I made it to Atlanta safe and sound. Uh, I was able to play my two matches today. I first played at 9 a.m. I'm going to go ahead and tell you how that all went. So luckily I was the one seed, so I got a bye uh, in the first round. And then in my first round match, 9 a.m., it was 29 degrees Fahrenheit. If you saw my short from this morning, uh, you see uh, it was very, very cold outside. And it was so cold that I had forgotten how uh, balls react to that temperature because I typically don't play below freezing that often. Uh, and it wasn't even that the ball was hard, is that it felt like it was completely flat. The ball was dead. It wasn't really jumping off the court correctly. And then a couple people around me who were also complaining about the same thing. Um, but with that being said, it kind of worked to my advantage. The guy I was playing was very tall, like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, big muscular guy. I, every time I had a backhand, I was just slicing low, slicing low, making him really pick the ball off, the, off of his shoelaces. And so that really worked to my favor. And then uh, I was up 6'2", and then it was 5'2", in the second set. Uh, when it started to warm up and the sun was really coming out, uh, you started to play much better, but I closed it out at 6-4 uh, there, so got away with one. Luckily, the weather helped me out there. Uh, second round, I played at 12.30, 
it was much warmer, uh, but it's a completely different environment. So I played a lefty this time, uh, and I played, you know, like tennis courts are actually supposed to have some sort of like slope to them to help uh, get rid of the water that's on the court, at least hard courts are. And this court was sloped, but sometimes you get slopes that are uh, egregious that you can actually tell by looking at the court. And it was a front to back slope, so that means one half of the court or one, or one side of the court was uh, low and the opposite side of the net was high. So if you're on the low side of the court, it basically makes it, the net feel much taller, especially while serving. If you're on the high side of the court, you have a big advantage while serving. Unfortunately, on the high side for me, the sun was right in my toss for a majority of the match, so that made things very difficult. Uh, and then on the side that I had to serve on downhill side, it was uh, obviously not very easy because my ball is hitting the uphill part and then sort of slowing down. So a little bit tricky for me. I was also playing a lefty and uh, the sun was not in his toss range. So he had an advantage on that side and I did not have an advantage on that side. Very difficult to play. So I won the first set 7-6 and then at three all in the second set, uh, the sun cleared enough away where I could start bombing serves from the uh, from the high side again, and I was uh, playing very well at that point and finished that set out 6-4. So overall, great day. Uh, I didn't play my best tennis on either of the matches, but it's good to be able to get wins even when you're not playing well. It just kind of teaches you a lot about yourself. Um, I'm not necessarily thrilled by the way I played. I think I played pretty scared, and I think I can play much better tomorrow and the day after, but luckily I made some money. I made like a hundred bucks, and uh, so that at least covers the entry fee for me. I'm not going to be making any money because I still have to eat and pay gas for anything like that. Anyway, this is just the first day. I'm playing again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Hopefully we get two more wins that would finish out my tournament here strong. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we're at 520 subscribers right now. Uh, that is a big deal. We're creating subscribers rapidly. So uh, yeah, keep liking, keep commenting, keep subscribing. I'll update you and let you know how I did uh, with the rest of the tournament. But anyways, see you guys.